Oh crap, I, I forgot that I was doing a countdown. Hi, hi, welcome back to Day Night Daily number 342. I don't actually know how that is possible. That I went 10, 9, 8, and then began looking at my Twitter replies. <laughs> how did that happen? How did that actually happen? Wow, alright, well... Let's continue. This is the Day 9 Daily where I'm doing an AMA and ask me anything because just want to hang out. I've missed doing the daily. My internet uh, bandwidth speed has been capping me, so I've been unable to connect properly to stream. So we're just asking some questions and I'm telling some stories. Yeah. Alright, so here we go. GamerDude17 says, Dear Day 9, we all know you love esports and SC2 and all that jazz. <laughs> Sounds like a phrase I would say. But what else do you enjoy doing on your free time? Any crazy awesome talents you would like to share? Oh yeah, I have a lot of talents. Mm. Fuck, I'm gonna keep dropping this pen so many times. Uh, if you could be doing something besides SC2 casting, what would it be and why? Um, so I'm gonna go backwards. If I could do something besides SC2 casting, I would do game design and game development for small scale games. That's something that I really, really, really loved doing a lot because I like um I like getting my hands dirty in a lot of work projects like for instance um I'm gonna use the example of the game because that's where I should have the experience in you know like if I were like just a designer if I were just a designer I could be like all right I want to have a game where you can you know you press the a button and you scratch your ear it's gonna be about ear scratching you know and then I'd be like now go, now go design this engine for me. Actually, let me, let me do a not fucking horrible example. What was that? Oh, that was terrible. Okay, so let's say we wanted to make a game about uh, magic carpet riding. And that was the idea, is that you, you fly around on a magic carpet, so you have to be balanced when you're on it, but you also want it to feel kind of good. I, um, I enjoy not just the process of trying to design that theoretically, but also like getting down in the nitty gritties and coding it and fiddling with the physics engine and all that stuff. Fucking ear scratching. I like I like that process. So that's why, for instance, you know, with like the daily, yeah, I like doing the show and talking, doing all the StarCraft stuff. But to an extent, I kind of like the fact that you know I know how to operate my own XSplit and put up these sort of overlays, like the one that you're looking at right now and coming up. And you know, like I I think. Th um, no, I actually don't have one, or, yeah, no, I have an HGL. You know, like, the fact that I can actually operate this and know how it works, I like that quite a bit. So I would really like to do a small game studio, nothing, like, too high level, where I would just be doing an ultra-specialized task. Um, any crazy awesome talents you would like to share? I... I guess Beatmania 2DX is the only thing that comes to mind. <laughs> Beatmania 2DX, ladies and gentlemen, I recently have reached the ability to pass level 12 random another songs on hard mode. But only like three. <laughs> yeah! Oh, man. Yes. That might mean something to a lot of people. I, I can spin pens. I can do the around the thumb. Okay, the around the thumb. I can do the, just with the pointer finger, that one, yeah, just with the pointer finger around the thumb. I can do the behind the middle finger. There's the behind the middle finger, behind the middle finger, behind the middle finger. This is in front of the middle finger, in front of the middle finger, in front of the middle finger, finger in front of the middle finger. And what else? And then there's just the regular pen pass where you just sort of stroke it. You just sort of stroke it like a cat. Just sort of stroke it like a cat. Yeah, yeah. And then we can do the in front of the middle finger thumb twist. Oh, uh, in front of the middle finger thumb twist. Behind, behind, forward, behind, in front of, and over the thumb. <laughs> I enjoyed that. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. I'm going to go retrieve my writing utensil. It's actually quite far away. Ugh. Is my ass in camera? It may have been. It may have been. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Alright. This is pretty good. 
Oh, oh, well, by the way, I'd like to give a special extra shout-out to uh, a little miss, you know who you are, who just sent me a message reminding me that I actually uh, generally don't program phone numbers into my phone. Generally not. I remember most numbers that people give to me. <laughs> I'm, I'm Rain Man. <laughs> so yeah, I, I just memorize numbers rather than preferring to program them, and I like that. Yeah, I don't know why. I just think that's cool. But what else do I enjoy doing on my free time? Well, I really enjoy um, comic books a lot. You can see, let me just follow my finger. Directly above my finger is Ultimate Spider-Man. There's Why the Last Man. I don't remember what's over here. Uh, there's, we have Bone, we have Sandman, we have uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I think I have Animal Man over there, but I didn't really read that very much. And then we have Why the Last Man. Then above the thumb is Akira. And then over... I think behind the overlay I have some more comic books. You can see all my Dresden files right there. You can see another stack of books. Um, I like that. I like reading. I like movies, Netflix, and talking to interesting people. Yeah, and watching comedy and shit. Yeah. Yeah! Yeah! I'm trying to remember things that they say in improv or stand-up comedy so I can reappropriate them. Yeah. Uh, will you play Amnesia Dark Descent on stream for us? currently working on it, actually. Who is your favorite player and why? Uh, am I allowed to go to Brutor on this one? Uh, Lige Dong, fighting! I really just like winning strategies a lot. I like things that win. Um... There was a recent game, for instance, MVP played, where he did this really weird marine tank push. It was not the 1-1-1, one, 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 but it actually looked like a better version of the 1-1-1. One, one, one. And that made me kind of go, like, it, it was just like, man, that's incredible. That's a really good build, and that's what really excites me. MVP is up there, definitely, because MVP is just incredible at not losing anything. And I don't mean games, I mean, like, individual units in the game. He's just... He doesn't overcommit with units ever. Like, if he has six Hellions, he'll never rush in and try to kill off a bunch of drones and maybe get a huge lead, or maybe fall behind, or he'll never put himself in wacky spots. It's like, I'm going to put these six Hellions at the front of your base and get map control. And when you try to harass me with Mutalisks, you will do no damage. And then when I move out with a huge push, you will lose. And it's like, God, it's like so sick to watch. If I had to pick one, though, um... I don't know. That's hard. I'm actually going to try to make myself pick one. For each race, I think Protoss would be Huck, Zerg would be Rat, Terran would be Select. If I had to choose them. It helps that I know him a little bit. I like Huck's crazy aggression, and I like a lot of the ingenuity of his builds. Rat, I just love how really solid he is, and he just makes really good decisions. And select I like because when he sits down and he hammers out a build, he, he, on the other side, shits out brilliance. That is my, my extremely unceremonious way of describing select's brilliance. <laughs> he, he, he shits it. Quite honestly. Um, let's see. Mm. Alright, here's a question from Jokoma. With Heart of the Swarm approaching, what new multiplayer unit would you like to see added, and why? Um, I want space control. That's what I really want. I like the idea of, I can put five of whatever at this location, and you now cannot cross at all. You literally cannot pass. Th there, those really don't exist in a strong way in StarCraft 2 at all. Like, in Brood War, it, like, spider mines. You plant, like, 20 spider mines there, you can't get through unless you have a lot of Dragoons and Observers and time to kill it off. It locks that space down very, very easily, and basically for free. Uh, lurkers. If you plant four Lurkers at the top of a ramp, if you have 12 Marines or 100 Marines, you just can't, you can't get up. Um, I don't know if, how the Lurker game would really fit for Zerg. Zerg are really good lately. Um, 
But I mean, something something like that. I would love to have a little more space control. Even siege tanks, I feel like with their food costs and how expensive they are in SC2 and how the spacings work, I'm never like, yeah, I'm just, I just put five siege tanks there in a bunker and yeah, what was he going to do about it? It's like, why, why'd you leave? What is that, like a 20 food army <laughs> just sitting in one spot? So I kind of I dislike that. Uh, so I'd like to see space controlling units. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see here. Um, from, from the puber. <laughs> what do you miss about competitive play that you don't get from casting? Um, that immense tension followed by nailing it. That is something I really, really miss. Where I almost, in a lot of games of StarCraft 2, it would feel like you were falling down an avalanche. And you, and you had to figure out a way to still fall off the cliff at the end and land on your feet. So you're constantly trying to like regather your bearings, which way is up, is there anything else coming? And then when you land, that is just like such an incredible feeling to have to do a couple hundred things right in a row and to hit all of them. And at every point there's that like, don't mess up, don't mess up, don't mess up, don't mess up, don't mess up. And then you're like, oh, oh my God, it's incredible. It's like swishing 50 basketballs in a row. And I, oh God, I just love that feeling. It is so great. So that's one thing I really miss. One is solving a really hard problem. Like a really hard problem. I get a, a surprising amount of that in casting because I feel like I'm always trying to articulate something complicated in as few words as possible, but as um, precisely as possible. To hit it like concise, but precise. Like that's the two words I really like. And that act of like articulation I find to be like some problem solving. What words am I going to select for that? But it's really a great feeling to be in that objective setting of the game and to have something really impossible. And then an answer pops out on the other side and you're like, I solved, I solved a problem. I solved a problem. I let you know, like if I have a build that I'm like, God, how do I hold off four warp gates? How do I hold it off? And then it's like, oh, I did. Oh my God. Oh my God, I did it. I did it! This is awesome! This is great! And that is like that is something that I do miss quite a bit. So I'll, I'll actually load up um, just playing against computer and just do that problem solving quite a bit because it's fun. Um, let me see here. Let me see here. Ah, Philium H. Muffman. <laughs> he had a bunch of questions that got reasonably upvoted, but they kind of have a similar thing to it. Where would you like to be career-wise when you are 40 years old, 50 years old? Do you think that you will still be casting SC tournaments when you are middle-aged? Uh, to... To answer bluntly, I don't, I don't think that way at all. I just literally don't even think that way. Um, how do I... Hmm, I want to see if I can answer these other two questions at the same time. Well, whatever. I guess I'll just do this one first. So there's this really important idea that I kind of always have in my mind, which is that literally at any instant in time, I can be whatever I want. And and I don't even mean like, you know, if the conditions are right, Sean, you could do blank. It's, I just march into things with total naivete and I'm just like, that is what I'm doing. Um, I mean, for instance, like someone even asked me like, okay, well the stage at BlizzCon or the stage at MLG had like 20,000 people in the crowd. What is it that motivate or how do you how do you get into the state of you know being comfortable enough to do that and it's like well you just go up there and you do it you just if you want to be the really confident person who goes up there you don't hope you don't pray you don't think okay let me repeat to myself let me psych myself up to do it you just march right up there and you become whatever the heck you want 
And if tomorrow I woke up and I just wanted to do, like, I don't know, improv comedy, I would just do that, right? There's no, nothing literally stopping me from doing that. If I want to be a cold, hard badass, I can just do that. I can become that. So um, that's actually something that's been very useful to me to just sort of perceive. Like, for instance, take the, the StarCraft II countdown party where... Okay, so the countdown party uh, to the release of StarCraft II was essentially an actual production. It wasn't just me doing my face as talent. It was me getting the crew and the content and organizing it and doing all the logistics for it. And I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, but that's just what I was going to do. I just was like, guys, I'm an event planner now. And we're organizing an event. My team's like, all right, here we go. And then we went into that. And you know what I can say now? I can say that I do events. That I I have done event planning and I'm capable of doing event planning and organizing. That's what the After Hours Gaming League was. Oh, cool. What's my background in that? Math and interactive media, which is basically game design, right? No one's giving me permission to do this shit. So I just kind of march out and do it. So when someone asks me, what's my what, career-wise, what do I want to be doing when I'm 40 years old or 50 years old, I'm probably going to be continuing to follow a lot of impulse and listening very strongly to what I want to do. Whether that's StarCraft or not, um, I kind of think that I have such an interest in real-time strategy games and just gaming in general. I'm certain that that is what I'm going to end up doing. But... Um, I never think of any of it as a career. I actually think it is a mistake to think of anything as a career. I think that at any instant, people should stop and say, what do I want to do? Like, really, what do I want to do? And then once they've identified that, be like, okay, now, now that I can look out, are there opportunities that will allow me to do that? Do I need to create something for me to do? I mean, there really wasn't webcasting for StarCraft strategy, but I was like, Seems like something that would feel fun, so pff, let's do it. And voila, now you're watching the daily. <laughs> it was pretty, pretty just naive and that sort of thing. But uh, I sincerely hope to be just doing something that makes me really happy. Yeah, and I also want a cool family. That's another large goal of mine. Um, do -ba -do -ba -do -ba -do 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 Here's a question from Kyrilli. Kyrilli. I'm going to drink some water. Try to figure out how to pronounce that. Ah, it's delicious. What is the secret to your extreme happiness you seem to have found? It's a pleasure watching you enjoying every single moment you share with us. Are you on drugs? <laughs> you know, I actually get that surprisingly frequently. Are you drunk or are you high, right? I, I have never actually smoked pot, ever. To the point where I don't actually know what that smells like. Because, you know, you're like, for some reason, I don't know if you've ever been with people, and they're like, dude, it's reeked of pot. I'm like, I don't know what that smells like. I have no idea. And it's always really funny because I, 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 I feel like I'm that super ultra innocent, you know, girl with the suspenders and the thick glasses who's like 12, who's like, what's sex? You know, like... That, that, and I, I'm like, is this a part of my uh, growing to adulthood to know what the odor of pot is? Because I, I have no idea. And maybe if it floats in my room, I'll be like, oh, maybe someone's doing compost. I don't know if it smells like compost. People are probably making a lot of fun of me in the chat right now. I see a lot of LOLOL and all that stuff, but uh, <laughs> I've actually never smoked. So, of course, never smoked before the daily. Uh, I've never drank alcohol before the daily, and the big thing that people always point to is that my eyes are red, and that's because I had a course of Accutane, because my acne was so bad. Um, so I took Accutane, which was weird, that drug messes you up hard, and uh, my I've had dry eye problems ever since, so that's why they get red, that's why I get those red eyes, that's why I get that beautiful bloodshot look for every daily. Oh, guys, it's time for the daily. I'm ready to s teach you strategy. Oh, also, I don't sleep enough. Also, I'm, as you know by these suckers right here, I've been sleeping a lot lately. Mmm, it's been feeling good. Um, but, uh, yeah, so lack of sleep plus overwork plus just general dry eyes leads to red eyes. So, yeah. But the secret to your extreme happiness you seem to have found... 
because there were even some questions about Cambria in there. And I, I, will, I will state flat out, I credit a lot of the reason why I am a happy person to my lovely dear friend Cambria, who we're going to talk about in a sec. Um, my, my, general, my general worldview is that life is amazing, and everyone's wonderful, and everything's great. But sometimes emotions can be scary and can make you feel very freaked out. And it's really important not to be alarmed by your emotions, not to resist them, not to try to get them not to happen, not to try to rationalize them, but just to sort of l just let it do its thing. I, I always have this image of, of the emotions coming at you like a huge gust of wind. Right, and a lot of people try to stand strong and lean against it to try to push, but you know, getting off balance. Instead, you know, I like the idea of poking little holes in yourself and just sort of letting it flow right through you. You don't even have to resist; you just sort of let it happen. And and the reason I bring up Cambria is I was actually not really happy in high school. I didn't really like it. I went to an all guys school that was very like. Sports, you know, and of course there were a lot of awesome people there, and I really liked the teachers, but I didn't really connect with anyone there. I didn't really have like a lot of close friendships from there, um, and so I remember going to college, and I was just like, whoa, I was, didn't really feel very good, and you know, I really liked StarCraft, and that gave me a lot of comfort, but that's kind of just kind of hard to be not really feeling good. And then to play, like, the hardest game known to man, and for it to be that demanding. And some days when I would just be on a losing streak, I would just, like, be really angry or really depressed or something like that. And and Cambria comes into all this because I met her at college, and... Oh my gosh, she's just the most nice person in the whole wide world. Holy crap, man, I might even get teary talking about it. She is just so nice. Holy shit. Like, I remember... <laughs> there was this one day where I actually, I think I've even told the story on State of the Game, and I talk about it, you know, in the funny fashion, about basically how I destroyed my whole room. Because I, I had a huge stressful day, and I'd stayed up all night playing to qualify for this ladder, and then I had to do work, and I came home and played more, and I'd just been awake for too long, and trying too hard, and playing too much, and I flipped out, and destroyed the whole room. Now, I want you to imagine, if you live next to me then, like right next door in the suite, and it, I just destroyed the whole room, right? And you heard the d destruction going on, and you heard me just like cursing and all that shit, how you'd be like, Sean's a crazy person, oh my god! You know, you'd wanna, you'd wanna sit down and be like, can you just not be so crazy or just not do that? And I remember, like, I called her and I was like, Kimberly, I just, I flipped out and I destroyed my whole room. And you know what the first thing she said to me was? Holy shit. <laughs> Damn it, I didn't actually realize I'd get emotional about this. Whew, whew, drinking some water. <laughs> she just went, oh, that's okay. Just like that. It's like the first thing she said. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Holy shit. <laughs> this is... Wow. I actually did not expect that to happen. Whoa. Whoa. And I even have... Look, 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 look at how red the eyes are. Look at that. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> but I mean, like, she just said that's okay. Wow. That's, like, powerfully nice. And, I mean, even from that point on, no matter, like, what I'd ever say, I would just, like, you know... I'd be like, oh, I got really mad, and I yelled at someone, and I said this. And she'd be like, that's okay. It, it was, she was just like, fucking so nice, holy shit! <laughs> like, who does that? Who says that? Like, she was just like, oh, you destroyed your room, that's okay, I'll just, I'll just come over... I'll just clean it up. It's fine. We're going to clean it up. And you know what? We're going to go have lunch. What the? Who does that? 
That was awesome. That was fucking awesome to have someone do that. Oh, man. Wow. <laughs> yeah. All right. Emotion. <laughs> oh, man. What a weep cast, man. Damn. But, yeah, just like completely unintimidated, unrattled. Just like, oh, well, it's okay. Oh, don't worry, yeah, you were stressed out. It's going to be all right. And it makes you realize, like, holy fuck, you judge yourself kind of quickly. You know, like when you lose a game and you're like, I shouldn't be getting angry. I'm, this is just a game and all this stuff. It's like, no, it's okay. This is fine. It's totally okay. So, yeah. Cannot believe. I'm actually a little embarrassed. Ugh. Whoo. Whoa. Oh. Damn. So this is why, this is why I always talk about her in the highest regard. To the point where if she was like, Sean, I killed 12 children. I'd be like, oh, you poor thing. You must have been stressed out. Let me, let me help you move the bodies. Do you need, if you want, I'll hang them on the wall and let them drain out so they're not so heavy. Don't you worry. That's okay. You killed 12 people. That's fine. Don't you worry about it. Like that's, like that's the sort of thing that I'm just like, yeah. Whatever you do, Camry, that's like totally cool. Uh, Yeah. So yeah, man, Cambria's, Cambria's awesome. Cambria kicks ass. Yeah. So I just sort of, I got kind of tired of being like bummed out one day and was like, you know what? You know, I'm just going to be happy. Things are just awesome. And I, anytime someone's like, oh, everything's terrible, I actually just don't believe them anymore. I'm just like, oh, with some emotions that are being scary and stressing you out. You know, I just, I actually don't buy it. <laughs> So that everything's terrible and my life's terrible. I'm like, no. So that's kind of the, the, the mode I operate under at all points in time. And of course I get really, really stressed out and all that sort of good stuff. But, you know. But, you know, whatever. It happens. It totally happens. Totally happens. And now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take a break. We're going to part three in a moment. Oh, my God. Part three time. <laughs> Taking a break. Woohoo!